Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of CIS Women's Hockey Weekly on SSN. John Bauer, Stuart Bowden with you here at the University of Ottawa Sports Complex. And as we do each week on the show, we're going to take a look at the week that was in each of the conferences. We will hand out our three-star selection, preview the game of the week, and this week in our player profile, it'll actually be players who are being profiled. We're going to talk to a pair of Ottawa GGs who may be embarking on a musical career. But first, let's uh, take a look at what happened coast to coast in the country. And Stuart, let's begin on the East Coast uh, in Atlantic University sport. What uh, jumps out at you uh, in the week that was in the AUS? Well, we had a big matchup between St. FX and Moncton and the ex-women pretty well you know, proved their dominance. The second time they beat um, Moncton this year, a 4-1 uh, decision out at the Keating Millennium Center, and that really distanced them, themselves from the pack already early in the AUS season. In the uh, Quebec Conference, the McGill Martlets now, 4-0 and oh on the campaign, and uh, if they didn't need an injection of uh, more talent, well, they got it. Uh, that was uh, Charlene Levante who comes back between the pipes after uh, sitting out the first two games of the regular season, first three weeks, uh, if you will, uh, when you put in the uh, preseason contest that she missed uh, against NCAA opponents. Uh, comes back and posts back-to-back -back shutouts for the McGill Martlets uh, against the uh, Carlton Ravens and the Ottawa GGs. Yeah, as you mentioned, it, it's very difficult to score on the Martlets and beat that team uh, regularly, and you add her back in, it becomes even more difficult for the other teams in the queue, but uh, they're going to have to keep fighting through and, uh, and hope that they can find a kink in her armor somewhere. Well, and the other thing with the Martlets, it's not just uh, the fact that uh, uh, Levante is back, but the defense is so solid. It's so solid this year and so deep that Caroline Hill has moved back to forward after playing on the blue line last year. And, uh, you know, you've got Jillian Ferrari on the blue line. You've got uh, um, uh, Cathy Chartrand. But uh, somebody who was an impact player all weekend long is somebody who doesn't get spoken about uh, very often. And that's Jasmine Sheehan. Yeah, no kidding. She's uh, one of those underrated players. She's usually paired with Kathy Chartrand, and Chartrand usually gets all the press. And uh, she, uh, she ends usually the one feeding her the puck when she scores. So definitely a player that we like to watch. Almost the same as Carolyn Hill last year. She was a very underrated uh, part of that team. In the OUA, our game of the week, or one of our games of the week that we did talk about last week, uh, was the Laurier Golden Hawks and the Windsor Lancers uh, in a showdown for top spot. And there is a new... Uh, master of the house uh, in the OUA as uh, the Windsor Lancers are now perched atop the conference standings in the Dills Conference. Yeah, Jim Hunter's squad at home beats the uh, Golden Hawks uh, going back on their victory that they had last year to, to end the season against the Golden Hawks. And not only did they beat them, they also outshot them. So maybe this is a changing of the guard and we have the Lancers as the top team in the OUA this year. And in Canada West, a week ago we were calling it the Wild Wild West, but uh, the Calgary Dinos uh, went to Alberta and uh, took a pair of games from the, uh, the Pandas. And, uh, you know, take a look at the standings. It's not very often that you see the Pandas sitting a game above 500 this late in the season. No, and we were looking up. Uh, the last time that the Pandas had three losses in the season was back in 2006-07, and we're only seven eight games into the season we still got another half to go so it, it could be very interesting as you mentioned calgary takes two from them regina splits with ubc ubc uh, you know a team that we thought would have a good year and nancy wilson squad right there in the mix manitoba battles back with two uh, victories over lethbridge and saskatchewan right there as well it's it's a fun conference to watch now the Alberta Pandas, the last time that they had three losses, as you mentioned, was 2006-07. They went on to win the national title. In fact, that's the most losses that they have ever had in conference play in their history. So uh, <laughs> Howie Draper's squad on a bit of a precipice. But, you know, if they can uh, repeat what they did back in 06-07, uh, I think that he would be happy with uh, uh, three losses early in the season. Well, and like you said, as we're seeing in the OUA, maybe it's a changing of the guard. We're starting to see new teams like the Calgary and the UBC and the Regina starting to make inroads in their own conferences. So maybe this is the year that Alberta you know, has to fight to get out of the uh, Canada West and get to Nationals instead of just kind of having a free ride like they pretty well had every year since. I'm not sure that uh, John Rempel <laughs> and Manitoba will, will agree with you on that, but uh, turning our attention to our three stars from last week, uh, Stuart, who is our first star? 
Well, we figured it would happen once uh, down the year. It's going to be Haley Wickenheiser. She had two goals in the 2-0 uh, victory over Alberta, and then she had a goal and an assist, the assist coming on the overtime winner uh, in the second game against Alberta. She's our first star this week. And uh, our second star this week is going to come from the Quebec Conference, uh, Kim Deschen, a native of Saint-Quentin, uh, New Brunswick, uh, in second year, uh, player with the uh, Caravan de Montréal. She was the leading scorer for the Caravan a year ago, the Rookie of the Year in the uh, Quebec University Women's Hockey League last season, and she is really starting to light the lamp, uh, uh, scoring on uh, Friday against the uh, Concordia Stingers and uh, a couple of times against the Carlton Ravens on Sunday. Yes, she, uh, we like watching her here uh, when the caravans come into town and uh, she really finds the uh, back in the net a, a true goal scorer uh, by the all meanings of the word. And the third star. That's going to be another goal scorer, Michelle Pollock from the Manitoba Bisons, a first year uh, rookie for the, uh, the Bisons. Picked up a hat trick in a 5 0 victory over the Lethbridge Pronghorns. An interesting note, she didn't even play in the first game. Imagine what she could have put up if she had that chance. So those are our three stars. Let's turn our attention to the week that will be in the CIS. And Stuart, we're going to head back out west uh, for maybe the marquee matchup thus far in the season. A pair of games uh, coming up uh, out west. Yeah, it's going to be the Friday-Saturday matchup at the Rutherford Arena in Saskatoon between the Calgary Dinos and the Saskatchewan Huskies. Both teams playing very well this season, and that's going to be a, a barn burner in both games. Possibly look for a split, both teams picking up a win. And let's not forget that this will be a pair of games where Haley Wickenheiser will not be in the lineup, but she will be with Canada at the Four Nations Cup in uh, Newfoundland. So that is our SSN game of the week. Well, being based here in the nation's capital, Stuart and I are privy to a lot of what's going on in the Quebec Conference, as well as the two teams that we broadcast for regularly, the Ottawa GGs and the Carleton Ravens. And this week, uh, coming across uh, one of our Facebook feeds uh, was a little note from Dominique Lefebvre, one of the uh, injured GG players, that uh, she really liked a musical link that uh, was shared by uh, one of her teammates. Now, that's not anything unusual, except for the fact that the musical link featured a song penned by and in and sung by a pair of Ottawa GGs. this come about that uh, you've written a song and now recorded it and released it to uh, YouTube? Well, we were studying for an exam <laughs> and we want a little break so we thought we'd just start writing and see what, what it came with. Yeah, um, I always play guitar and sing like when I was younger so um, I don't know, Carly just helped me and we just wrote a little song <laughs> just for fun. Jody sings all the time so like I think it was just we were just sitting there studying and we are like, let's just write a song because like, we were talking about everything too and it was just kind of that's how it came about when we started writing it. Yeah, like whenever we were studying, I always had my guitar out and I'm just playing like stupid little chords. So we just wanted to, I don't know, we just wanted to write something. We didn't really know if it was going to go anywhere, but it did. No, it turned out well. Like we didn't think it was going to, but then after when we just kept going over it every day, like we'd want a little study break and... I didn't reach all our team, they're like, oh, a song. We're like, no, it's actually no. serious. <laughs> yeah. so. They didn't believe it. It was pretty cool. Have you ever done anything like this before? Um, I have. Carly just started helping me. Yeah. Um, but I've like I haven't written any songs. This is our first like written recorded song. But I always do like little covers and stuff. But it's just for fun. We kind of started like another one, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, we might have another one coming up. <laughs> so, what was the inspiration for this particular song? Well, it was about boys, pretty much <laughs> past relationships and. I don't know, we were just feeling down that day, I guess. So It's a good way to like express ourselves in a different way, so it's kind of sweet yeah. to see how it came out. Yeah, our, the new one that we're kind of working on is about something totally different, so it's just cool to just write something down and put it to a melody and express stuff. our feelings like that instead of always just talking about it. So Yeah. 
Is there anybody musically that, that has kind of inspired you? Somebody in your past that has uh, taught you to play music or shown you certain things uh, with the guitar that, that uh, you think uh, kind of uh, should be recognized now? Well, I did have a music teacher way back when, but um, I kind of didn't do that anymore simply because of hockey and how intense it was. So um, I know hockey is always special, so I just wanted to see this kind of just a past time. experience like it was pretty easy for a song but maybe one day <laughs> compare that to maybe blocking a Cathy Chopin slap shot in front of the net what would you rather do learn to play guitar or step in front of, of one of her shots definitely step in one of her shots I don't know hockey's still like my number one thing and I love hockey but this is just something different to do and it's fine, like it's something different, so yeah, I like that. I think it feels good when you block one of her shots. Yeah, I think so. It's good. her a little bit, that's yeah. right. It's worth it. That's Jody Reinholtz and uh, Carly Porcellato, and uh, uh, we have no musical talent, but uh, those uh, young ladies certainly do. Yeah, that's uh, after their hockey career is done. Look at uh, possibly seeing them on uh, MTV or something down the road. So let's uh, turn our attention back to what is on the ice and on your screen right now is the broadcast schedule for the next week here on the Streaming Sports Network. We have a plethora of games and Saturday is our biggest day of the week with uh, four games on the network. Go Laurier at Waterloo, Carleton is at Ottawa, Windsor's at Guelph and Queens is at Toronto and all the rest of the games coming up on the network this week are on your screen right now so feel free to tune into those games and remember if you can't watch them live a couple hours after the game the archive is up and running and you can watch the games in their glory as well as we have highlights and don't forget CIS Women's Hockey Weekly each week here on SSNCanada.ca. So that will do it for this installment of Women's Hockey Weekly on behalf of my partner Stuart Bowden and our entire production crew here in the nation's capital this is John Bauer bidding you so long we'll talk to you next week for CIS Women's Hockey Weekly.